YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this beautiful little fatty. This thing is so sweet. And we did one not too long ago that was a FW109. And so we said, we've got to do the F4U Corsair. Super fun, make sure your wheels go forward. They are canted. If you go the other way, you'll probably break your prop like we did just a second ago off camera. And we're gonna try again. Here goes nothing. Hopefully it takes off. Oh, 3D6G and rates. Top button, okay? No sticks. You can't push down, there's no clicker in there. Okay, so here goes nothing. There, lots better. Oh, buddy, and we still managed to knock the prop off. So this time it didn't break, which is good. Our last one blew up. Okay, so hold on to that for me. We're probably gonna hand launch this thing just so we can get some flight footage. We have been struggling to get flight footage because the weather has been horrific, guys. If you notice the snow berms, yeah, that's right. That was a March snow. Okay, so here goes nothing. We're just gonna launch that way. Full throttle and just giving it a launch. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so the auto leveling is good but it's got a lot of nose down pitch moment. So I got a trim, lots of trim. Remember these things turn wide. I can barely make that turn. That's all the way up on the trim. So that tells me that the provided battery is probably just a little bit too big. It is actually flying reasonably easy, but look how much stick I'm having to give it to keep it in the air. <laughs> there we go. Finally, it's it's good. It seems like it's settled out. It's sweet looking, but it's not easy to fly because you have to go so fast. And this is banking yank, which is just weird because you, you want to be able to use the rudder to help your turns around and you just can't. Looks pretty sweet though. It does. And it's pretty calm trying to keep it in the light folks you may notice that it's a uh, morning flight we've had such horrific weather oh yes but i keep trying to use the rudder see it's just not doing anything <laughs> okay so i'm curious rates uh that's about the same it feels like <laughs> okay i guess the rates don't really seem to have a huge impact so that single bump Double bump. Yeah, I don't see really any difference. So I guess we'll just keep it in the double click. And what I want to do is I want to bank and yank this thing. And then I want to go into 6G. Okay, so now this should give us full authority. Of course, it's wonk is all get out because that's the way these planes usually fly. Okay, so good. We got good control authority. It's a little scary, but yep. You can, you can stall it just like that, folks. Okay, back into the 3D, excuse me, the 6G. We were in 3D when we could roll it over upside down. But I gotta say, of all the XK flying planes that we've had, this one definitely is a little bit more challenging. The wings are so short, they're really deep, so you get a lot of, a lot of lift production, but you just don't get a lot of uh, lever moment from your ailerons, and then these cheaper 400 millimeter board, uh, warbirds that we've seen. This one's in that similar size class of the micros or the minis, whatever you want to call them. This one here, like the others, has inboard or halfway down the wing ailerons and they're small. So what happens is you don't get as long of a lever out of that roll mo moment. And so folks, if you like this thing, you're gonna enjoy it, but just remember, it's not gonna be an everyday flyer because you're gonna need real good conditions to get this thing going. It definitely looks nice. Let's see if we can take a landing and not have a miserable failure. Oh, and it flips, one touch Does flip. <laughs> so guys, all I gotta say is, this thing is super fun. It's not an amazingly great flyer. We've seen a lot better flyers from XK before, but what I wanna do is just double check one thing. Everything's intact. Okay, so that's the first thing you should do is put that to the inside hole, see if you can get a little bit more elevator authority. And the second thing is I must say, the battery is pretty much in the only place you can stuff it, okay? Mm -hmm. And I've got mine down as low as possible so that it gets the center of gravity down. Definitely do not put these in 
this way because that's pretty much the way the manual shows it. And the thing is, when I say the manual, I mean like the picture on it. And you'll see it says left and right. They're not really indicated as such. And that looks correct in a cartoon world, but it will make your plane flip over. So if you take that and you just flip it around, or if you take and trade sides and flip around, I prefer to get them as far out the wing as possible. So you see the direction I did that. And this that little bit of cant in the landing gear will buy you tons of help on takeoff, okay? Also on landing, but evidently not quite enough. So still pretty cool. I still think it's a fun plane. I know some of you guys don't like the fatty planes and I get it. I, I wasn't a fan of them until I got that F-14. And I said, that is so much fun, even though I crashed it into the house and into the ground and different things. <laughs> it was still really fun so doing much. it. So I gotta say, when you've done everything else, this is a plane for you. And it is pretty cheap. So check it out in the links in the video description below. You can help support us with Patreon or PayPal as well. They're also just below. And definitely get this with the right number of batteries because they're really cheap when you buy these with the multi-pack batteries. Yeah. So go for that. And then also I gotta say, XK does a pretty good job, but on this one, I'm not gonna say it's a double thumbs down. It's not like that. But the thing is, it definitely doesn't fly like your, your 400 millimeter Warbird series like we've come to expect. This one is definitely a lot heavier. And also if you want it to fly better, you're probably gonna have to add a little tail weight. That's something you're not often gonna hear me say on a small plane like this, because generally you want them extra overstable. This one actually needs a little bit of weight back. So other than that, great plane, real fun. Definitely not a beginner plane. I'm sorry, kids. You don't get the cartoon yet. I, or at least I wouldn't recommend it. I would go with something that looks more like a real plane. It's gonna fly more like a real plane instead of a cartoon, because cartoons are fake. <laughs> Did I just give away the Santa Claus secret? Oh, that's right. You said cartoons are fake. Check it out, guys. It's right there in the links. Thanks for watching. Come back for more. YouTube. Big box. We're gonna open it right now. And it's gonna be amazing. Uh, what do we have here? Warnings made in China. Oh. Imagine that's that. That's surprising. So unusual. We got a label thing. What do we have here? Something about, yep, there some declarations thing. Super boring. Yeah, super boring. What is this? It's the Q version fighter. That's what I've always wanted. That's right. No, the Q version fighter is the F4U fighter because we yes. already did the BF-109. Mm -hmm. And the BF-109 was super fun and squishy and amazing and we really enjoyed it. And it flew really good even in consideration of other similar sized Warbirds, like the 400 millimeter Warbirds. But I gotta say, these little stubby, cartoony-like airplanes have been really fun, and I thought I would hate them. But then we got that F-14 a while back, <laughs> and I just thought it was super fun, and I'm like, hey, we're gonna do this. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna try this. It's from XK. It's got the 3D 6G system, which is a stabilizer, and it looks like uh, it comes with chargers and all that good stuff, so let's see what's inside the box right now. If you guys are new to the channel, we usually do small planes in one video, unbox, build and radio setup, and then we'll do the maiden flights. And on the bigger planes and bigger pieces of equipment, we do them in a couple of videos. But in this case, this one should be all as one, okay? So you get the XK manual, it's in Chinese. What is this? Okay, so there's some assembly instructions. Oh, cool. Okay. Looks like there's even more than these two. Evidently. Okay, looks pretty straightforward. Pretty much done with the instructions on that. Got some foam to protect the foam from the foam. And we've got the typical goal shaped wing. If y'all like this, is, it's like nothing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's that's so cool. And then one servo that's gonna go out there. We've got the landing gear mounts. Then of course this thing is gonna affix to the front half. There's the fuse, so let's go ahead and pull that out. Grab by the horizontal stabilizer. And we have an obscenely large pilot. <laughs> now I do love the fact that we have a pilot, but I kind of wish the pilot was a little bit smaller. 
or more cartoony. Um, okay, we have the spinner here with a quick release prop. That's pretty sweet. Not as detailed as we've seen on some planes, but this one looks like it's maybe just a little bit more detailed. Yeah, it's similar because this one has the canopy in the cockpit area mm -hmm. um, as clear plastic as opposed to just black. So I don't know. It's an improvement. And you've got your little receiver board in there. You got your motor up here and you got a lead that will eventually go to the battery. Make sure you take the battery out when you're done flying. That is a typical thing for most of these airplanes with lipos. So you've got an elevator servo, no rudder servo, and then an aileron servo. And on this one, you also didn't have a rudder or a steerable tail wheel. So just keep that in mind. These are bank and yank planes. I still think, you know, what's the harm in having a rudder? It's an extra $2 worth of cost or whatever it is. Okay, so we have our different props here. We also have an additional prop adapter. We got a couple of batteries, some screws, landing gear, and a screwdriver. Is there anything else in here? Ooh, there's a snack. Oh wait, sorry, oh. that's desiccant. Shoot. Okay, so that's everything, folks. And then I'm just gonna pick this up. And the transmitter is on the bottom, okay? Can't tell if that's like stuck in there somehow or if it's just pressure. I think it's just pressure. I'm gonna try to pull this thing out. Now, this thing should come with everything you need with the exception of generally transmitter batteries. And XK is good about their consistency. In transmitter, you have elevator, ailerons. Uh, yeah, okay, so it is actually gonna give us six. Sometimes when they're three channel, you this- You have that. Access. Yeah, that doesn't exist. We have a button, we have a button. That's not a clicker, and that's not a clicker. And then you've got on, off, and on the back, of course, you can put in four double A's. Okay, so we'll just leave that out for now and then repack this into the box so we can get it out of our way. But honestly, this thing is not gonna be great for transport because of the nature of you have to assemble the plane. So just keep that in mind. I don't think that's a big deal but in this little cartoon Q version fighter um, series, I've been super happy with how well they fly. And honestly, if you guys know me, I either like them to be super scale or good flying, but preferably both. And it is possible that we're gonna get planes occasionally that maybe aren't as scale as we'd like, but they're super light, so they fly super good. Or they're gonna be just absolutely gorgeously scale, and they're a little bit of a challenge to fly. So that is a reality sometimes. These ones, should be good flying. I mean, this thing is like nothing. And mm -hmm. it's made of that nice soft rubbery foam. Ooh, yeah, the joint is what was cracking on me there. But otherwise you've got good movement and protection from crashes and bumps and bruises. Of course the prop can pop off and I'll show you that here in a minute. But let's go ahead and build this thing right now. Okay, so in looking at the nut and bolt sack, we've got a prop and a prop saver. This is the thing that you can thread onto the actual motor shaft. Okay, and allows the props to pop off. That's nice. So we'll actually put that straight back in the bag. And this will be our backup. This little doohickey here. I'll show you how to mount it. That's the thing that I just had in my hand a second ago. And you can see that big gear coming out from the motor. Okay, so I'm gonna just rock this on. Then once it's rocked on, then you should be golden. It doesn't want to go on though. Let's see what I'm doing wrong. I'm trying to get my fingers and hands on the motor to protect it and give me something to push against. You see how I got my thumb in there? Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious. You gotta press so dang hard. Doesn't feel, doesn't feel like it's gonna go. And I think what's going on is this thing might be just too far down in there. No, that should work still. Maybe there's like a certain way it lines up. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, so got it now. So we should be good to go now. So we got the prop on there. And then we've got a bag with some screws in it. It looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's some two big ones and then a bunch of small ones. Okay. Then this wing has to plug in. So the instructions do tell us where to plug it in, right? Uh, I think I'll leave. Yeah. Where does it say? Shown in the, the picture. The third socket from the tail. Okay. 
of the aircraft. The third socket from the tail of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Okay. It shouldn't so be inserted backwards. Third socket from the tail. One, two, three. Okay. Well, let's try sticking this in. Okay, it's only gonna go one way or the other. Okay, so that's not right. And you can tell where the pins are. They're situated away from me. And that's how it looks in the connector. So then this will line up. And this is a, it looks like a micro pH connector. Yeah, went in there okay. All right, so we'll see. And it does look like you probably could add a servo for a rudder, but I'm not 100% sure if the software supports that. So what I was gonna do is, I'm actually gonna also, um, I'm gonna get a pair of scissors and cut that warning label off. It's gonna make it extremely hard to get in and out the battery. Mm-hmm, put that label on there. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off now. Trade me spots here, Kim Crew. Mm-hmm. So, then I can get a little closer to the action so this is easier. Okay, so we'll just like cut this off. Obviously you wanna take your battery off each time you're done flying and that's what this warning says. So we'll just take that out of the way. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna open this up. This so it makes it a little easier to get our battery lead passed through. Like this. And then that thing has to drop back. So I've got the battery lead up front and then that just drops in and falls down and settles into place. So pretty basic stuff. And then that sort of snaps into place and goodness gracious, you hardly need a screw. Yeah. Why are there so many screws? I don't understand. I think maybe it's because some of the models need the screws mm. and I'm not sure. Maybe they just didn't know what size it was. That seems like something the Chinese would do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the bigger one. So we're gonna see if that's necessary or appropriate. Let's try getting that screwed in. Using the provided screwdriver is hard for man hands. Huh, going in to totally fine. It's a pretty nice screwdriver actually. And if you guys are curious, you can put this into a chuck if you wanna run a drill with it, which is nice because they're so dang small. Okay, so now we've got some main landing gear. It looks like squishy tires. Camera crew, you wanna show them? Mm-hmm. Squish, squish. Mm -hmm. And then they spin nice and free. Now, I don't know which one's right and which one's left. I bet they don't show it. Yeah, it looks like the wheel's supposed to be out. So I'm just gonna try this and see what direction it looks like it goes. Cause you see, I've got the wheel going out. Oh, you can tell because of the dihedral on this portion of the wing. Okay. And then because of the dihedral of this portion of the wing, that's gonna be pretty obvious where that goes. And you can also kind of see how it pivots up off the ground onto the mains. You've got lots of prop clearance, but eventually you will hit. So that's pretty sweet. And then the tail dragger, squishy as well. Show them how squishy that is. That is pretty amazing. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. Why don't we get that on big expensive $600 planes? I don't know. Seems like something that uh, might need to get worked out, eh? They apparently can't make them that big. Yeah, well, they would actually get flattened out. They'd get flat spots. Mm. When you got a little bit of weight to your model, it does matter. And this is so thin right here, I'm having a little bit of trouble pushing that in. So I'm gonna be real careful. You mm. can see how that angle goes. It's got a flush surface now right here. Okay. So pretty sweet. It's pretty much built right now, cool. but I really don't understand why they sent so many extra spare screws. That is, seems very strange to me. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting screws back in. Can immediately sell those on the black market of dinky Chinese screws. Things in little bags. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so we'll keep those for later use and we <laughs> will. Cam Crew's chuckling because she believes I won't, but I will. I will build something useful someday. Okay, so now we've got a little charger. Should we put that screwdriver over there too? We got a little screwdriver. We're getting the piece count down to almost nothing. Throw that out for me there, Cam Crew. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is we need to charge this battery. So we're gonna pull off the cap, and I've never seen a cap on a USB port before, but that's pretty cool. Okay, so this says USB charger input voltage is DC5 at 0.5 amps, and the output is 3.7 
at 600 milliamp hours. And as you can see, it's very basic, but it's got the little plug on the end of the charger port, which is pretty sweet. I kind of like that, or at the end of the case, okay? And what I like to do with these little planes, this is a uh, 7.4 at 400 milliamp hours. That's a pretty big battery for a 7.4 at 400. It seems larger than what we've seen. So that's unusual, but not a big deal. So now what we have to do is we have to actually charge these, but one tip I can suggest is let's check the voltage. So why don't we walk over here and we'll go ahead and check the voltage before we get this plugged in. And I'm also gonna take a marker like this. And I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna say, this is the XK, XK, uh, that'd be the F4U, F4 fatty, F4 fat, okay? Mm -hmm. They call it the Q series and I think it's supposed to mean like cute. XK F4 fat, okay? Now the reason I do that is because we end up with a lot of batteries and those batteries can be easily confused among the millions of them that we keep hold of. I'm gonna use a voltage alarm now to test the voltage. This should give us a really good idea of what we got. This is a flight pack voltage tester. And what we do is the negative goes over here. And just plug it in and it's gonna give us our voltage. 6.8, that's perfect start uh, storage voltage. So if you guys weren't aware, when you have a LiPo, a lithium polymer pack, you're supposed to charge them um, to 3.8 volts uh, for storage. It's called storage voltage. And so generally what I do is I actually just fly them and then if I know I'm not gonna use them, I won't charge them back up. But one thing we like to do with our little one ass packs is we like to use this little micro charger. It's so much easier than all these crappy provided ones. But if you don't wanna spend 50 bucks or whatever this thing goes for these days, then what we'll do is we'll show you exactly how the stock one works, but we'll have this one side by side. And I'm just gonna grab this little stock adapter that we used to charge something else recently. And there's nothing fantastic about this. It's made by Belkin. You can get them anywhere. You can plug this into your laptop or anything that's got a USB-A on it. We'll just plug it into our regular outlet and a red light comes on. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and slide this in as you can see, the light goes out. So when the light comes back on, it will be charged. Now, alternatively, let's look at the micro lipo charger. This one is actually, has a model number and I always forget it. So what we'll do is we'll link to it. Um, yeah, that still doesn't even tell you what it is. They did a pretty bad job on the marketing on that because you can't even tell what the name of this is, but it's fine. We'll put a link to it so you guys don't have to search for it. And by the way, if there's a link to the airplane and you buy from the links, you'll help support our channel. We're gonna give you guys a look at this. Press and hold. You see it comes up with A0.05. So we wanna set that to 400. And you're like, but Brian, that's only says 40. That is correct. We're gonna charge at 0.4 amps. We press and hold it. You've got a live voltage reading. And then it's gonna charge us. Now, most LiPos fly from 4.2 volts down to about 3.8 to 3.6 to 3.3, maybe in extreme circumstances down to three. But then what's gonna happen is you have a chart, it's gonna drop off like this. So that's why you feel like, you know, my plane stopped having power. That's what happens. Okay, now if you wanna use a more sophisticated charger, we get all sorts of different adapters that we've built over the years, not the least of which is something like this, okay? And this little adapter here is a balance board that I used from years back. We still occasionally use it. And on that, I also use these, okay? I don't even need the balance board anymore because I can just plug that straight into the charger and accomplish my same goals. As you can see, there's lots of these. Just mind your polarity. Occasionally you're gonna get one that has a weird polarity. So if you want to charge a 1S, 
You can use this S2200, which would be kind of overkill for this, or the S155, which is super nice. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically come over here. I'm gonna show you what happens if you disconnect this. It's gonna give you a warning, like there's a problem. Okay, there isn't a problem per se. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in. Now you'll notice that I have a bunch of different leads on here. And you're like, that doesn't make sense. But what's gonna go on is you can see now that there's voltage. Saturation's hard to film on this, guys. Okay. So this is obviously not a 6S. So I'm gonna click, scroll down to 1S. I'm gonna change it from 4 amps, which will probably catch it on fire, down to 0.4. You could probably charge this battery on like 8, you know, 0.8 or maybe even 1.0 amps. And how do we know that? Because the size of this battery, if you look close, it says the capacity is 400 milliamp hours. So 400 milliamp hours is gonna give you exactly what you need, okay? So that's the output, and that's also gonna be for us the input. So I'm gonna charge at 0.4 amps. Milliamp hours means one thousandth of an amp. So if you had a one milliamp hour, that would be 0 0.001 amp hours. <clears throat> So if you have 400, then it becomes 0.4 amps, okay? So we'll acknowledge that, and then we'll go to start. It's gonna ask, do you wanna continue without balancing? I sure do. And you're like, how would you even balance this, Brian? There's only one plug on it. Yes, I agree. But as you can see, it is charging at a rate of 0.5 amps. This is how many milliamp hours have been pushed through the circuit. And that will keep up. And you can look here. That's because that screen is updated by this plug. That plug right there. Not the main discharge or charge lead. Okay. And if you press down, there is no internal resistance that you can measure because there's only one cell. So hopefully that helped you guys a little bit. As you can see, that was weird. I hit the back button and look what happened. That was weird. So I'm gonna go up. And you can see all sorts of other cool things. But anyway, useless information for us. Generally, these little chargers that come with them are slow and tediously slow, I might add. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plop this in here and just press and hold and it'll restart the circuit. So if your kids are out flying and you've got, say you've got this little zero over here you're flying with, and then you've got that little XK, um, and then, you know, everybody's out kind of doing their own thing. You could come in here and set these things up and they cost very little to actually put together. And then you can have these two little birds out there having dog fights, which is super cool. And I like the size, I like the color. This one here actually flew amazing. They feel like they're super similar in weight. They should be sub 250, which is good um, as it pertains to the drone registry. And if you don't know what I mean by the drone registry, just remember there's rules. I don't set them. And I'm not going to give free airtime to the federal government. So you can look it up if you really care. But basically, here it is, guys. How the heck am I gonna get this thing to bounce on there? It's not all up yet, because I gotta get a battery, too. Let's see if I can balance it like this. Yeah, maybe, 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 no, maybe. Come on now. I just can't quite get the, the three landing gear to hit all at the same time. We'll try this with, we'll pause and find something. All right, so we figured out we can put a cup on here. We zeroed out the cup, so you can see it's in grams. And I'll just set this up here. Score 66 grams, or 2.3 ounces. Jeez. 66 grams, or 2.3. Pretty crazy. Very light. And then what I'll do is, just to simulate one of the batteries is charging, we just recently did the zero, and it's got a 400 milliamp similar size battery, so let's go back into grams. So we're all up flying weight is gonna be somewhere around, 
it's somewhere around 77 grams or 2.7 ounces. So that's pretty amazing that it can be that light and just to, just to pose, juxtapose that to this one, which is actually even lighter. Wow. But I think the wing mass on this is quite a bit bigger. Look how much bigger that wing is. You can see the overlap. Is see? the plastic heavier too on the canopy? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, probably. And then they have a pilot in there. Yeah. So that's really cool and it should make for a fun flying plane. So let's go ahead and get batteries into the transmitter. We can just slide this stuff out of the way. We'll come back to that in a minute. I do wish they would have detailed the motor a little bit more because I feel like that's kind of a miss there, mm. but it's something you can add on your own. And I can't remember if this one doesn't have a quick detach. No, it does. It just has a bigger spinner on it, but there's still a quick detach in there. So that's good. So they should be basically interchangeable props. Um, okay, so what you do to load your batteries is get your world's cheapest AA batteries and the flat one goes to the spring. The flat one goes to the spring and the flat one goes to the spring. Okay. And then this slides back and I'll usually write down what it is. Throttle stick needs to go down. Just pretend like it's gonna take off. Turn on the transmitter. It's gonna go into a flashy light sequence. Okay, everything feels pretty good. All right. And then just for grins, we'll go ahead and plug in the battery and show you what this thing looks like. So the red is actually now pointed toward my belly on both the battery and the plane. And then this thing needs to go all the way down. And the batteries that come with this are long and skinny and they actually slide into that little T shape. Wait, you turn the light on for a second. See oh. that T shape? Yep. So in this case, just because we're just for strictly for demonstration purposes, it's dark outside right now. We'll actually be flying this in a future video and then we'll just put them together. You guys won't know any better necessarily, except that it's not nighttime. Goodness gracious. This is not the battery that comes with it. I'm just using it so I can demonstrate stuff while we wait for them to charge. Okay, so I'm gonna shut this off and turn it back on. Okay, and everything's working. So we have an elevator, ailerons, and then no rudder, okay? So let's see what it does for power. No arming sequence, did you notice? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's really noisy. I wonder if it's gotta be. It's got a good amount of power. Yeah, it does, sounds like it. That's gonna be fun to fly. And then uh, there are different modes, but I don't know how to figure out what they are. You can see the difference in the elevator. So we're gonna pause, grab the manual. As per, as per tickle as per typical, yes. Chinese manual is useless. So basically what's going on is this is your mode button. Two beeps means 3D. You'll note that it hasn't changed the position of anything. Okay. Okay. But then if you go back, it should be auto leveling the aircraft, but it's actually quite difficult to tell. There's two beeps. There's one beep. It defaults to the 6G, which is like auto leveling. And then you can press it once and hear two beeps and it goes to 3D, okay? So it's just resisting the environmental impact. But I gotta say, I can't tell if that thing is trying to find level or not because the ailerons are freaking out on me. Elevator, here's another way to tell. You can tell how much less it moves and that's trying to find level. That's how you can tell. Whoa. There's level, okay? See the elevator? Now it's in 3D, that, that is not leveling the aircraft. It's just resisting movement, so it's stabilization. And then when you flip it over, see, it must not, must not mind being upside down. I don't get it. But either way, folks, uh, the point is, you've got two different modes. One mode is like stabilization and auto leveling. And the other mode is just stabilization and it shuts off the auto leveling. So you go into full loops and everything. Here's another way you can test. Full up elevator. It didn't stop the elevator. 
Although, did it? No, it didn't. See the down elevator? Yep, it doesn't stop either. So that's how you can tell, is if you give full input, it's gonna eventually stop. So in 6G mode, see the elevator? I pull up on it all the way. It's eventually gonna stop. See, it's gonna limit what you can do. And then the roll authority, see it stops there. That's as far as it's gonna let you bank. Okay, now I'm gonna roll back. So I don't know, it's just, it's always easier to see these things fly. Normally we show that and it's so much more clear, but this 3D 6G system just does things a little different than all the rest of the stabilizers that we use. So I'm super excited to see it in flight, but what we might do real quick is we might just go ahead and show you one of the batteries. They've gotta be getting pretty close to done. This one stopped evidently because I did something weird to it. And then this one over here is at 4.05 volts. Okay. Okay, so I stopped it. Now we'll unplug it. Just be careful to grab the connector as much as you can. And let's just show you how well these things fit because I felt like the other one didn't fit very good. They're probably real similar on size, by the way. Also, if you're wanting to mark your CG, it's 30 millimeters back from the leading edge. And what that's gonna do is that'll just tell you where you should be, but it doesn't really change much because these batteries pretty much only fit in one way. Okay. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. And then once you've plugged it in, you can drop this down. And it's a really nice fit then. Mm -hmm. And there you have it, guys. So then, it's already working, which is pretty cool. So there you have it guys from XK, the little Q series, uh, Q version fighter, which this is of course the F4U Corsair and it's really cool and it's really fun from XK. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll try our best to answer them. And then of course, if you wanna help support us, buy the planes from the links in the video description below. If you're not into this thing, or that thing or something like it. And we'll probably link to this one too, just so you guys can find it easy. Mm -hmm. If you don't like this and you're just like, you know what, that's too cartoony for me. We have done literally hundreds of planes. We have thousands of videos and I'm 100% certain that whatever you guys wanna find, you can find here on Brian Phillips RC. So if you're having trouble finding it, you can go over to brianphillipsrc.com as opposed to youtube.com forward slash brianphillipsrc, which is where you are right now watching this video unless it's embedded on Banggood's website or some other website. But what we ask of you is if you wanna help support us, we have Patreon and PayPal down below, just under these planes, batteries, chargers, things that we mentioned specifically in a video, you can buy those things. But if you don't want this particular item, we have tons and tons of planes back here. There's tons in the basement. We have literally hundreds of different videos. We unbox them, we build them, we radio set them up. And by the way, one really cool thing about this particular plane is that if you want to, you can use a Spectrum receiver or you can use a Futaba receiver to fly these things. And you're like, are you seriously? I am seriously. And I'll show you how. Okay, so first things first, you would unplug your battery. <clears throat> now I'm not gonna do this today, but I'm gonna just show you exactly how you would if you were gonna do it, okay? So you pull the battery out, you take your battery, you put it back on the charger, and then what you do is you grab a screwdriver, and I'll show you exactly where to plug in your wire. Okay, so that's charging. Grab a Phillips screwdriver, in this case I think this one should work. We already put away the one that came with it. Obviously this is going to have a million times better gimbals than this little piece of crap that comes with it. What you have to do is you have to open this up and you do have to buy extra parts. So just be aware of that. It's called a, usually like a serial uh, S-Bus receiver or PPM receiver. And I'll show you in the manual, it talks about this. All right at the front of the manual. It's very useless though still. Okay. 
There's your DSMX. Okay. So now that I've undone that one screw, go ahead and pop that out. Take the wing, lay it to the side. And then look what we have here. We have an S-Bus plug right there. And then we, this one's for Futaba right here. Okay. Then of course this one would be for DSM. Not DSMX, but DSM. But you can downrate DSMX to DSM generally. Okay. So if you guys want to see that, we'll pause and show you how to do it. So I've got these little satellite receivers. Now these would be modern ones. There used to be a million of them because there's two different styles. And this one has three plugs, three wires. Okay. Okay. We have links to these. This one here has longer antenna. This one, the antenna comes out the side and it's shorter. And then, as you can see, this has three wires too. Then, look at this. That's SLRX2, I believe, and this is SLRX. And then this one, look, four wires too. See, can't use these two. So these two won't work. See that? SRXL2. SRXL2, okay? So those won't work, but these ones, DSMX remote receiver, carbon fuselage remote receiver, okay? So we're just gonna try this one. I think this one's technically the cheaper of the two. If it's not, I apologize. Uh, but I just wanna show you that it can work, even though I'm not gonna actually probably run it on DSMX. It would make a really good flight experience out of an otherwise cheap plane, okay? So let's see if the plug goes. You can see this is a little micro pH looking plug. Okay, I'm just giving you guys a shot of how that looks. And then the color code, all right? So I'm just gonna pull that through right now. Just kind of get some of it. You know, that's gonna pop in there. Feels good, it went, okay. So now we can go ahead and this one here, does this have a push button for binding? There's a button right there, really small. Oh, wow. Yeah, really small, okay. And then this plug, as you can see, this one would clearly fit in there. Okay, now I just wanted to show you this. This is a six channel receiver, I believe. Oop, had that backward. There we go. Okay, so now that's plugged in. Now watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my transmitter. Okay, so we got the Carbon Z T28. Cancel them back, add new model. Create an acro. Gonna take a few seconds. Okay, so once it's done creating the model, it should already be an acro, so we don't need to look at that anymore. But we're not actually gonna set up much stuff. But we'll just walk out, just a basic acro, and we can see the monitor mode to see where the stick positions are. And the only thing I might do is set up a throttle cut, set it to switch H, okay. Throttle cut's working, throttle cut's off, and everything looks good, throttle cut's back on, and we're, we're safe, okay. So now, we're just gonna use a zero battery again. And we don't really care about much of anything other than just seeing this operate. So we're gonna plug this in, and then this thing's gonna come to life, hopefully. If it doesn't come to life, watch what happens here. I'm gonna click, go down to bind. Okay, so bind failed. Why did the bind fail? Probably because I never forced it into DSMX or to, um... oh wait, I don't even know. Is that actually? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a bind button. I need to get a smaller screwdriver, guys. Sorry.
This one's really little. What are you doing, trying to focus? I'm trying to actually give them a shot of that little button there. Yeah. It's extremely it's really small. really tiny. And I'm pretty sure that's the bind button. But I just, I want to satisfy my curiosity if I can control this thing. I don't know that I really care to. I can't 100% tell if that's, is there, there should be a push button on this, I thought. And then my other thought was that it's supposed to initiate um, and then come up and just power up right away. I'm wondering if maybe I don't have the pins in there. Let's try binding it another way. Let's power this off. Okay, so the power's off. Press and hold and then turn it on. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug this. Okay, so we've got that unplugged. And I wonder if it goes into the end one. Cause it, that looks like just another servo connection. So, unless I'm mistaken and this is just not compatible, which is always a possibility by the way. I just feel like it should be compatible. I thought this one was compatible, but that's why I wanted to settle my curiosity here. Unless I just don't have it plugged all the way in. Maybe it's not snapped in. You gotta press really hard. Okay, so we'll pause for a sec. Okay, a few things learned. That is not a bind button. Secondly, the other thing I learned is that I don't believe there's a way to force this into bind mode without another receiver, which is a big bummer. But you wanna know what? I still have backup plans. I wanna know what it would take if I wanted to. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this uh, Gooski S2, uh, which is an amazing helicopter, by the way. And we installed one on this. And so what I have to do now is I have to get in there and get that receiver out, which is underneath this cover. So my first move, of course, is to try to find out whatever size screw these are. There's like three or four Phillips screws up here. We're just gonna try to pop those off. See if we can get down to the receiver quick. So this is just a micro receiver. And it's, it's like a satellite receiver, but it's actually, I think the problem with this is this is only gonna work in DSM-X but it would be DSM-X or DSM-2. And usually the Chinese say DSM-X or DSM-2, and they mean all the DSM-Xs. So it's unusual that you can't go back to a DSM because DSM is not the same as DSM-X and DSM-X is not the same as DSM-2, but there's usually reverse compatibility on a DSM-X device for DSM-2 support. So DSM-1 may not be supported on that piece of equipment, but I believe this one might be, because it is SRL-X, or excuse me, SRL, but not SRL-2, okay? Hopefully I said that all right. Please forgive me if I didn't say it exactly right. I hope you guys get the idea, because I am not super well-versed in the different protocols in that regard. Okay, that was 1.3, I think it's a 1.5. Yep, 1.5, just pop this out real quick. Very awesome heli, by the way. Um, like, too awesome for its own good. Um, I'm not a good enough pilot to fly it to its full potential, so I feel pretty inferior when I do fly it. But really, really nice. And I'm just gonna try to pop this off now. So now all I need to do is just get this to a position where I can rotate the canopy off or at least get it out of the way. Yeah, like that. Okay, so you can see how super fantastic that was. That was a great install. I used tape, guys. That's when you know you really did it right. So that is a different receiver than it is. what that other thing is. Yeah, it is. And see, this used to be the standard satellite receiver. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you what, what it would look like. In fact, I'll probably put it back on the Goosey because I really like that heli. But uh, see, we're ready to bind. So I'm just gonna like literally lay this out of the way. We're gonna see if this goes. Okay, so 
so I just want to kind of keep my fingers free of the free of the prop. And we'll just stick this one in here. Hopefully I have my alignment of the pins correct so far. I think I do. And you know, it's funny because I don't see any activity going on here. See that? Mm. Oh, there's a light. There's a light and it, it went into bind mode. So now I can go to bind. Hmm. Oh, so it is DSMX. So yeah. Okay, so I don't understand. And there you have it, guys. Oh. So, I mean, I, I don't understand what the difference is unless maybe it's a pinout difference on this cable. And if that's the case, then maybe it would make sense. This is, in fact, the SMX, guys. But it's a serial receiver, and it says auto bind. Oh. Now, the other one doesn't say auto bind, but this is also no longer being made. Not this size. Okay, it's extremely small. Okay, so let's just plop it in here real quick. Now, I'm like I said, I don't really plan to actually use this airplane with this receiver, but I just wanted to more or less show that it can be done. So let's just get this thing back in one piece real quick so I can show you the controls operating. Just trying to get that battery, I'm catching my lead. There we go. And that doesn't need to be spatially aware or anything, so it can just be in there wherever it. Yeah, but you would of. you would want to secure it so it doesn't get interfere with your mm. connectors and stuff like that be, because you got your your linkages that go to your elevator. Okay. Okay. Elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right. Yaw left, yaw right. It did say you have to be able to control channel five. So it looks like channel five. Let's make an assignment to a three position. Well, actually, let's let's see. Okay. So as you can see, there's nothing on. There you go. Off. So there must mm. be an intermediate stage. Throttle cuts on and tested. So I would go down to system setup, disconnect RF, and then you can go into channel assign. And I wanna just make an assignment for switch A, I'm, excuse me, for gear, which would be channel five to switch B. Cause then I have three positions. Okay. See, three different positions now. Okay. So in the far back mode, there's nothing. Then there's like stabilization then there's probably auto leveling. You can see because the elevator's pointed up, now it's level, now it's down. Now I go to the middle mode and it's just, it's just stabilization only, okay? So that's pretty sweet actually. And if you wanted to change the way that that worked, you can go over to monitor and you can see what position. See, I want that to be all the way back. So I want auxiliary two, or excuse me, gear to be at zero when it's back. And I want it to be at 100 here. That'd be none. I want it to be zero, okay? And then here I want it minus 100. Okay, so minus 100 is where I want minus 100. But here I want that to act as plus 100 and I want this position to act as zero. So what you can do is you can go into your digital switch setup. You can select the switch, switch B. In this position, I want this to be zero. So I'll just scroll it into zero. You can see where it switches, it's about 25%. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this up to 100. Okay, now watch this. Okay, so now I've got auto leveling, or excuse me, stabilization, but not auto leveling necessarily, although it does look a little bit like auto leveling. Off, and then I have something I don't know if that's auto leveling or not. I think I might've got that backward. So now I think I should just be able to reverse gear. Okay. Okay, so on, off. Nope. You can't just reverse it. You gotta go into your digital switch settings and make your setup. Okay, so that is pretty cool that you can do it. The problem is, I don't know why I can't force this one to bind. 
And my next test is going to have to do with whether or not this cable is part of the problem. Okay, throttle cuts on, flipping the plane over, popping this out. Actually, don't even really need to do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because it makes it easier to pull that up. Drop the wing out of the way. Kind of lay this down, and the camera crew is gonna reposition herself. Okay, so as you can see, we've got this thing, which worked out fine. Now I'm gonna unplug this. Now watch what happens. It just diverts back to its other protocol, but there is no movement. I wanna try one other thing. I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work, but I'm gonna go down to system setup, disconnect RF, I'm gonna go down to, this is just a serial port. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's nothing. See, that would actually start using this port for an accessory module that you can mount on the back. And I've never done that before. So system setup, disconnect RF. Scroll down to serial port, turn that off. See, that's SRXL2 crossfire. And this is where you can change your frame rate too. Okay. And this is where you can force it to DSM2 versus DSMX. And then there's also next, model match, other models with this ID. Okay, pretty cool. So we're gonna walk out. Now throttle cut is on. Hypothetically, if this cable is the problem and this cable's good, then we'll know that this is capable, it's just that the cable is incorrect. Okay, so let's see if this works. I don't think it will. It'd be cool if it did. Okay, so you remember how that one said auto binding? Mm-hmm, and it took a second. It did take a second, but it didn't take like 10 minutes. No. Hmm. Not looking real promising now, does it? No. So there's gotta be a trick to get this thing to bind. And I think what Megan was reading is that you're supposed to, or you're expected to be using this with another receiver. And so as a result, you would actually hook up to another receiver. Well, the trouble is, I don't even know if you can get those receivers anymore. Oh yeah, because it did say you need one that has S a satellite yep. receiver port on yep. the receiver. So that you can bind it, mm -hmm. which I think I do, but I have to think about it. So we're gonna pause and talk off camera for a second. Okay, so I had to dig a little deep. <laughs> I've got this Redcon. Uh, this is like a 921 DSM-2 technology, but it uses a satellite receiver as well, okay? Now this probably has the same problem that we're having in that we can't force, this one's the one that did work, but it's got auto bind, okay? This one doesn't, okay? So we can't get it to force into bind. Well, we need to be able to bind it somehow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this receiver to actually bind it. And the way you use a receiver to bind, even without having anything hooked to it, what you can do is you can actually use any other plane that you've got. In my case, I'm just gonna grab whatever battery was the quickest to grab. I'm gonna plug it into my XBC battery checker, and this is gonna give me BC voltage to operate my receiver. And uh, of course, then you're gonna have to have a cable to plug into the actual receiver so you can energize it as though it were hooked up to an airplane or a helicopter or whatever it is you're hooking up. So all these steps are just ridiculous, I know, but I wanna show you guys how I did it. There should be at least a cable in here. So you might pause for a second and find it. Okay, so we have like a cable that would look like it's coming out of the ESC and we'll just plug it in. It really can go to any port except for the bind plug. So I'll just go to like throttle because it's what we're emulating. Okay, so there's throttle. And then we'll put the bind plug in. And remember this transmitter is not bound to this, okay? So I'm just kind of like ready to bind whenever we're ready. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in here, click, go to servo test. And then I want the brown is away from me, okay? So as you can see, it's in bind mode now. You've got the flashing lights on this red con. And then what I want to do is go up to bind. It's possible we don't have enough power for this, but we'll see. So it bound. Okay, absolutely no problem. So now if you were to re-energize your aircraft, of course you would be able to just power it up. 
that's as though you plugged in the battery and there's no way to emulate really much of anything. So not gonna change anything in terms of output, but it is nice that you can cheat and use this to bind your now satellite receiver. Now watch this. This just happens to be this Redcon, which I'm sure we got links to that crap too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna see if this is now bound on this thing because it will probably work. And in fact, I'm gonna take this cable off just to save myself the trouble because it's really hard to plug in there. And then I'm gonna plug this one in. And as you can see, we are connected. So that's pretty cool. So we got another satellite receiver. So that's the way it used to work, folks, is you used to just bind them up. Well, because we don't have the infrastructure to do that with this new Can cohort. You? Yep. Okay. And so what I'm trying to show you is that at any time you can pair these suckers up, I believe. So I'm gonna force to bind mode with just any receiver that happens to have the SLR. S L R oh, S R X L, not X S R X L two. Now I'm gonna power this up by just plugging this into the throttle channel. And look at that, we're in bind mode, folks. So now I'm gonna to bind to this one by clicking and scrolling down to bind, bind, bind. Boom, there it is, guys. So now, so now this is working. Should work. So now I should just have to literally just at any point just unplug this, unplug our bind, and then we're just gonna plug this one in and it will work. Okay. Hey. Okay. So as you can see, guys, it's not the smoothest transaction in history, but it can be done. And also there are a lot of old radio systems that will allow that, but I think there's one other way to do it. And I think the way that you can do it also would be to short the ground to signal. Now I am not privy enough to what the pinout is on this and good luck finding it because this used to be the thing, but now spectrum has moved on and so instead of offering those things, they offer a four wire, which is the SRXL2. Now this plug has four wires and I'm gonna show you another example. You can just stay kind of right there. Okay. This would pair up with the almighty 8360T or the AR637T. And guess where that plugs? Right there. Oh, Boom. that's what that's for. See that? Boop. Yep. But guess what? There is not a place on here that you can plug in an SRX. Um, just a basic connector. Right. You have to have the version two with two. four wires. So the reason we go through these things is because I don't do a lot of FPV flying. I don't do a lot of quad stuff, but I have found myself in this situation a number of times. So now that we have a method, we know how to bind this. We just have to, this actually has a bind button. On the four pin one. This just got a bind button. Yeah. Okay. So that's super easy. Same with this one. So of course the one that you can't bind, it's hard to bind. So I just don't know with certainty that the outside pin is going to be ground and I don't want to fry my receiver. But we also now know how to do it because as you can see, it is now connected. And watch this, when I shut off my transmitter, just to prove it to you, you'll lose link and this will disappear. Yep, so we'll turn it back on. See, now there is another trick you can do with this. Oh, and then I found this little baby here, which is super small, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm gonna show that you can bind that too. So the cool thing is this one actually might be Futaba. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare and contrast the plug. Yep, that one's gonna be a Futaba. Yep, F F H S S. F H S S. And this one has a handy dandy push button. Mm. So you can hear <laughs> it, okay? So this one would actually go into there. And I'm sure it would freak out if you plugged in two, so I don't wanna do that. But look how freaking small that's that tiny. thing is. I mean, granted, you could pull the board out of here, but that's even smaller. So that would allow you to hook up to your um, FHSS uh, protocol transmitter, which could be 
uh, multi-protocol OpenTX transmitter, but if you're gonna do OpenTX, just find this protocol and use it directly, and then you don't have to add an accessory piece of equipment. The cool thing is about this whole exercise is now I know how to do it, and also right. I'm up another receiver, which I could plop into the helicopter. So can I ask probably a stupid question? Just ask it. It's Let's not Let's say stupid. you have one of those. You only have one of those little FPV racing things like what we started with. You yeah. only have one. And you want to switch it from your helicopter into your plane, but you want to be able to switch it back. Will you have to rebind and redo your no. programming every time? Because it's already bound to this. So you'll just, you could just plug them in, yeah. take it out, plug it in the other one. So okay. all your settings for the plane are stored in the model, the profile. And then this device has a radio and a transmitter inside. It has a receiver and a transmitter. And this device has a unique ID, just like this device has a unique ID. And they are talking to each other via transmission and receive, it's transmission reception, okay? So it is full duplex communication, even on the ones that aren't T, because there's some data that comes back, I think, it might not get a lot of data, but I bet there's at least a little bit that's coming. <clears throat> so anyway, the whole reason we did that was by, because we needed to bind. So now that we know how to do that, it would basically mean, you know, get one of your old AR-810s or I can't remember whichever models they were. Oh, yeah, I don't know the model numbers for the older ones. But either way, this just happened to be one. Now, we also have a lemon one here. Let's see if that works because I just so happened to have used like all the Spectrum ones I had. So here's a Lemon RX 10 channel, okay? And so this is a, just one of these receivers. And I actually had this inside of a plane like this to protect the antennas, okay? I'm gonna actually put this bind plug in. Bind is here, okay? So I don't even know if you can get this one either anymore. And then this, this might actually have an auto bind on it. Let's actually plug it in over here and see what happens. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and that's the antenna protector, but just I'll use it for packaging. Yeah, I, I can't tell if that's got an auto bind. I kind of doubt it. This one's pretty old, but it is DSMX. So I'll go ahead and just uh, take this hot glue off of here. So we'll unplug that, we'll unplug this. Now this would have been bound up to my DX18. <laughs> okay, so we're now plugged in. And as you can see, it hasn't gone into bind. And just, just to prove a point, we'll attempt to force it into bind and it, it won't work. <clears throat> okay, so now that we know that they're not bound and it failed, I can go ahead and de-energize this. I'm gonna bring this over to the Lemon RX, although it was already bound there. So it, presumably it should already be bound, but this had the port on the side here. See that port on the side there for a satellite receiver. Okay, so we'll just plug in this wire, which could be any of the wires. In fact, I was questioning earlier this cable that was provided with the receiver so I might as well go ahead and use that one just to show it can work. Okay, so it plugs in there, no problem. This is the one with the big glob of glue. So we'll slip this in too. Okay, and then we've already got our bind plug. So now we're gonna energize this, simulate uh, input on, I can't tell if I'm actually on throttle. Well, throttle would be the second, it doesn't really matter. You can energize that anywhere you want. You should, you should be able to, okay. So now, that's not waking up. I don't know why. I wonder if that isn't actually the bind button. Oh, you know what? I don't think bind is up there. It says that's just, this is not a bind plug. That's not a bind plug, that's throttle. I hope I didn't just damage this. I think bind is up here. Okay, oh, see. bind? Does it go yeah. horizontally? That's weird. Yeah, it is. it's a different setup on this lemon. There we go, so now we're in bind. So as you can see, we're in bind mode. And generally, once you're in bind mode, it's, you know, it's gonna do its thing. See? 
see DSM two. Okay. So you haven't seen DSM two much in a long time. <laughs> but I think this one actually is eight, or it's X. But you know why this is DSM two? Because that's because two. it's operating through a DSM two receiver. Okay. So hopefully, guys, this video was helpful to you in more than a couple of different ways. Because really, when we get these little planes like this, oh, and then I suppose you want to see the oh the, it actually the DSM two. Works. Okay, will work. Okay. See. Mm -hmm. So it's working. We got a little flashing light. So as you can see, it works. So now we've figured out a way to not only bind this but bind this, which now makes these things not worthless, which is kind of handy. Um, and then we've also confirmed that the cable, of course, is good. But the catch is we do need to keep and maintain access to at least a receiver from which we can use old one. to bind Yeah. with the old style, okay? So the other option is I'm about 99.9% .9 sure you can force bind mode. We're gonna check on that before we end the video and show you what we learned. Okay, so I did a little bit of research, and basically these plugs, as, as they are configured, was data, ground, plus 3.3 .3 volts, plus or minus like 20% or something like that. So anyway, <clears throat> I don't believe you can just short those wires. That's what I was checking into. You have to send a series of pulses to this at like 11,500 baud rate. So I don't know. You're going to have to look into it if you want to try to do that. Guys are using microcontrollers should do it. But I find that now having researched that, the easiest way to actually bind one of these would be to just use something like this and just have that appropriately available to then bind on a particular model. But just keep in mind, once you've bound it, and we went through this series of tests, then that does not mean that this one's also gonna still be bound, okay? But it might be. <laughs> See how it starts working? It does take a second when you power cycle. Okay, so this one's bound because it's attached to this, okay? And this one should be hypothetically still bound. Okay. Okay. And then I believe we also did this one. They should all still be bound. Okay. Takes a second. Okay. So we technically have all three of them bound to this particular machine, which is weird. Unnecessary. <laughs> yes, but I'm actually kind of curious now. I'm just going to go ahead and just for grins, I'm going to see if this thing will power. I don't think it will. <laughs> see? Drawing down the power. Okay. See, that is, that is thinking. It takes a second. But see, what's going to happen is this thing it energizes part of the circuit, but it doesn't have enough juice to actually run the whole receiver, okay? So when you energize this, it might work, but I doubt it, because you're not gonna get, you're only getting 3.3 .3 volts out to this thing. So it's just not quite enough juice. And let's see if we killed it. Watch the flash, will stop eventually. There it goes, okay? So we've established that you can do it. It's just more work and harder than you expected. Of course. Which is why you're watching Normal. this channel. Yes. Um, okay, so to be clear though, this gray wire is data, the black wire is ground, and then this one is power. Okay, so it's not the way that every other standard plug is set up with the power in the middle. So just be aware of that and pay attention to the way the pins are pinned out. So yeah, this thing will work, sort of. But you have to have some equipment in your repertoire to be able to draw from. And I don't want you guys to not know that. 
Also, I don't want you to think that you have to in any way do this. I just think it's cool that you can do it. And so of course, if it can be done, does not mean that it should be done. And yet we still do it here on Brian Phelps RC mm -hmm. for your viewing pleasure. Yes. So as you can see, we started with a fully functional plane <laughs> and we ended up with a uh, partly functional plane. But it is pretty cool to know that it's possible and we're really glad to help you guys step through it along with us. And then the camera crew had mentioned, you know, you really need to clarify why we go through this entire process instead of just showing you the answer. Well, in this case, part of the reason we do that is because the way that I learn is by doing it myself. Um, and to be honest with you, struggling with some of the details does help to reiterate or it helps to reinforce, um, you know, <clears throat> what I learned and why I learned it. By the way, if you guys ever try to put these things back in the packages, they are a real pain in the neck and there is a trick to it, but you usually have to have like a screwdriver because these things have to drop down into the plastic a little bit further than you might expect. And then once you're back into there, just, I, I always do that to protect the antennas because now that we've spent all that time setting that up, I'm not actually even gonna use it, put it back. Which, which is what I said at the beginning, Right. to be fair. But you can see I've got that ready to go because these things are not free and we use them uh, for demonstration purposes, but I wanna show what they're gonna look like when you buy them. Um, and so we can link to this in the video description below, but you're gonna have to have, you know, something that's got this old style connection, mm -hmm. um, whether it be <clears throat> DSM-2, DSM-X, or whether it be 11RX or it be something else, because you can still get some of these things, but you can't get all of them, okay? And so we don't wanna make it sound like it's just gonna be a cakewalk and you'll just be able to just plop it in there and it'll work fine. Right. If it says auto bind on the serial racing receiver, auto bind. If you got one of those hanging out somewhere. Then you should be fine. And then this of course is going to come with a cable that would be similar to this, okay? So it's gonna look just the same. And it's really cool to know that it's possible, but it's also like annoying to know that it's that much work. And so for that reason, I'm annoyed with you. But I'm gonna put this thing back together and we're gonna be flying it on the crappy stock transmitter. And then maybe if I get really frustrated with it, then I'll go ahead and put the NX-10 that cost, you know, six times as much as the plane. But if you're getting it for a kid as a get or a gift for oh, somebody, yeah. I mean, that's what you have. You have the transmitter it comes with and that's what you learn on. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Other than the fact that it sucks. Generally. Given the situation. So, and then also once you unplug your, your doohickey from the doohickey mm -hmm. thing, your, see how it's not working? Your doohickey doesn't work. Show the people, see this? Okay, and you're like, why does that not work? Well, first of all, I'm gonna shut this off just to alleviate the possibility of conflict, even though our receiver's out and it should not be a factor, I'm gonna go ahead and power this back up. See the flashing? Now it's bound. Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there you have it. It's not anything too difficult, but you do have to have the right stuff to make it as easy as possible. And that's why we do it for you here on Brian Phillips RC, because we wanna teach you guys not only what to do, but how to do it and how to arrive at the position where you know that you need to do this versus that. Because if you don't do or if you don't know how to arrive at the point to ask the question, you can't ask the question. And that is where I have been frustrated and part of the reason why we do this channel from years ago is I would get confused about relatively simple steps because nobody ever explained it. They just assumed that everybody knew what the heck this crap was. And admittedly, I go into great detail in these videos Sometimes it makes for a long format that doesn't necessarily have to be long format and just is because we did weird things. Uh, but we hope that you guys draw some extra value out of that and that's what we try to bring on Brian Phillips RC. Even though it takes a lot of time to watch these videos, we appreciate you guys watching them and hopefully we've answered the question that you may or may not have had. Maybe you didn't have them and now you have them. <laughs> so you're welcome. I have more questions. <clears throat> but also if you guys wanna buy these planes to help support us, 
that's a cool way to do it. If you want to buy things like the NX10 or even that little charger, which by the way, of course, the batteries are charged now, um, then that is a great way to help support Brian Phillips RC. And that way you don't have to contribute money to us. We just get money from the companies that send these things out and sell them to you guys. So it's a win for everybody. It's a win for the companies that send us things. It's a win for you because you get a good product that you're comfortable with. You know what you're gonna expect to get in the garbage bag from Banggood. You know, you, you understand the drawbacks that you're gonna be facing, and then you go ahead and order it with confidence. So that's what we help to do. We also help to prevent one and dones for people that are just getting into the hobby and people that are coming back to the hobby. And you're probably thinking to yourself, good Lord, I don't know half of the crap that came out of his mouth in that video. If you're that guy, then you're on the right place because there's so many places that are gonna just assume that you know it and they're probably gonna treat you like an idiot if you don't and you're not an idiot if you don't because just because nobody ever explained it to you does not mean that you're an idiot. It just means that somebody didn't take the time to explain it to you. And now that you know, you can go ahead and work through it and use it for future use. So that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. And we like doing it, but it does get us punished like bad boys and girls that we are. Because YouTube, YouTube will not recommend our video to somebody because it's long. And so the way you can combat the big evil Google, all you have to do is just smash the like button and say, screw you Google. That's what you're doing when you thumbs up. And then you can say alphabet soup my butt. And then you can also click the bell for notifications. And you can obviously subscribe, which helps as well. All those things help. We haven't even turned on, what is the other thing that you the can membership. turn on? The membership. So we'll probably eventually at some point do that. Because there'll be like four people a year that want to do that. And that's cool. And we want to give you guys every opportunity to support us in any way you want. But at the same time, it's hard for us to keep up with all the different things that people are doing to help support YouTubers and things. So we just love that you guys are out there supporting us. We try to bring high quality content here on YouTube. But if you're having trouble finding it, just go over to brianphillipsrc.com. And that's with an I, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, R-C.com. It's spelled exactly the same as like wherever the name is somewhere on here all over all Boys, over and everywhere. if you ever get lost and you're like i don't know where to find something brian you can click on that face that childlike face it that looks, looks a little like bit you. like me but for many years ago you click on that face then you can go to the screen there and there'll be some search results you can put in a search just for our channel and you can find what you're looking for also if you're looking for a non-plane related video sometimes we'll drop a video like this into a non-plane video because we did some things that are sort of like not plane related and then we also have ground vehicles and things like that but non-plane videos um, are more like battery charging smart technology transmitter videos you know that sort of thing it's <clears throat> it's it's a resource for people that are really just getting into it but just keep in mind things have changed a lot since we filmed some of those mm -hmm. videos so you have to keep up with this stuff. And if you're not the type to keep up with it, then you need to just keep up with Brian Phillips RC and we're gonna get you directed in the right direction and help stop you from spending seven or 800 bucks on garbage you don't need. That's just gonna make your life terrible. And uh, we're gonna help direct you into $700 worth of garbage that you do need that will help make your life better. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, as long as you buy your wife equivalent. No, <laughs> it's not the way it works. She needs to get into this hobby too. Because then you guys can share your planes if they survive. Is that how that works? Yes. You'll share is. your planes with me? <clears throat> yeah. Look, I will. I can't fly any of those. So, guys, thanks for watching. So much more to come from Brian Phillips RC. This one went a little bit longer than we meant. Obviously, the flight is always enjoyable, and that's what people really usually come from. Um, but, but then this stuff is helpful if you're interested. And we know you guys are, so come back for more. YouTube, look at this. It's such a cute little fatty F4U Corsair. Super fun. And we're about to fly it for you right now. If you want to buy one and support our channel, check the links in the video description below. This one's from XK. We have everything is provided in the box. We've got a gearbox here. Quick release prop. Comes with spare prop. Landing gear are detachable. No steerable tail wheel. Single channel for ailerons single channel for rudder or rather single servo and we're going to see how this does 3d 6g switches up here 
rate switch is down here. Okay, so just final control surface test, and here we go. Whoa, buddy. Okay, that didn't take long. We're gonna pop the prop on here. That thing tipped over like crazy. And yes, it did break the prop, incidentally. Okay, well, that didn't last long. Uh, we'll pause and come back, I guess.